Playing with IBS has always been a struggle of mine. But I'm not alone. Thousands of Battlefield players just like me suffer from irritable blueberry syndrome. But there is hope. Hardcore League is a major advancement in the treatment of irritable blueberry syndrome and reduces the likelihood of encountering PTFO inhibitors. When compared to other PTFO therapies, Hardcore League has been proven to help players live significantly longer without IBS flare-ups or growth. Hardcore League changed what I thought was possible for IBS treatment. Ask your doctor about once daily Hardcore League and visit HardcoreLeague.co for more information. Hardcore League may cause serious side effects including elation. The most common side effects are lack of sleep, extended gaming, trouble stopping, newfound love of the game, excessive fun, and advanced PTFO. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another episode of Shots Fired Podcasting with myself and Real Dum Dum coming at you live ladies and gentlemen with Sergeant Danger Cow this evening. Very excited to bring this gentleman on board, uh, just having a little chat with him before we get things kicked off and uh, really excited to hear what Mr Danger Cow is going to be uh, talking about this evening. We've got a lot going on, guys, tonight, so uh, we'll uh, be going through that shortly. But in the meantime, just like to welcome Mr. Danger Cow on board. Danger, how the devil are you this evening, my dude? Good evening, good evening, good evening. I am very well. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting me along. I really appreciate it. Anytime, my dude. No, we we are very thankful for, for yourself giving up the time this evening. And of course, we do have Mr. Real Dum Dum on board with us this evening. Mr. Double D's, how the devil are you today? My boys, I am doing wonderful. And it is an absolute honor and a pleasure to join you guys in this episode of the Shots Fired podcast. Mr. Danger Cow, I've checked out some of your stuff on the YouTubes there. And I've got to <laughs> hand it to you, man. You are... Uh, you're a beautiful, beautiful individual, and it is too cool to get the chance to sit down and chat with you, man. I'm really looking forward to it. I think, oh, let's, uh, let's get it done. It's good. I think, is it fair to say uh, that Mr. DC actually does bring the pew, pew, pew and the oh my days moments? Having watched uh, some of your uh, YouTube clips, my dude, absolutely on point gameplay and uh, really excited to have this opportunity just to chat uh, with yourself really about what it is that you get up to within the Battlefield uh, community. Um, I believe recently though, uh, if you're happy to talk about it, you've, be, you've been abroad. Um, do you want to talk to us about that? You, uh, you managed to meet up with one of our, uh, or a couple of our uh, colleagues from the Hardcore League? Yeah, no, it, uh, I'm part of the Game Changer program, very uh, fortunate to be invited over to Stockholm to play some of the stuff over there, which was, uh, I mean, I've never been to Sweden, uh, I don't know if anyone, uh, either of you have or, or anyone else has, but uh, it's been, it, you know, really interesting to see the game firsthand, we got to play a little bit of, uh, of the, um, the sort of multiplayer maps before, yeah. before it was released, and it was it was a, an interesting experience um and obviously you know it's great to play the games it's great to see see the the devs and, mm. and talk to them which is actually one of the greatest parts of this is you can talk to those guys without you know a little bit of nda kind of tickling around in the in the un, unspoken background but you you got questions you can ask them and they, and they are after all human beings they will ask or rather answer anything that you'll you'll ask within reason um and they're it, it's really i find really uh useful to talk to them and get an insight because i think a lot of a lot of the problems is they they you know you, people, people say oh why have dice done this or why have ea done this and they can't tell you why um but when you talk to them on a one-to-one -one basis they'll say actually you know what this is this is what we did it for or you'll ask a question that they might not answer on Twitter because they don't want to kick up a firestorm. But you say, hey, listen, you know, why is AA so powerful? Why is the range yeah. so big? And they'll explain it and they'll break it down for you without having uh, a fear of the sort of uh, the, the re-crowd coming at them. 
Right you are. No, I mean, you, you make an absolutely fantastic point there. And, and if anything, it would be great to see more of these events done because I believe as Battlefield has grown as a community, one thing that has definitely lacked, especially when you're looking at other games, and I appreciate there is a reason for this, but it's never had um, a massive sort of uh, player base of people meeting together. We don't seem to have expos. Uh, like other games out there and I think one thing that would be good to see uh, eventually is for us as all as a community is to be able to meet in the, the sort of the, the main countries where Battlefield is a thing uh, and to have this opportunity to all meet as a community and like you say to meet the devs would be amazing and uh, a, a great sort of opportunity to discuss how sort of like they're implementing different features within the game uh, but I know Crazy has some pretty burning questions for you coming up um, so uh, I'm going to fire over to Crazy for the minute here. Cause, sorry, Crazy? Oh my days, that is embarrassing. Oh, I don't know where well, that I, came I, from. I, I crazy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, Crazy being uh, such a beautiful fella, I, I, I take no offense to that. <laughs> I actually called uh, uh, in a podcast the other day, we were talking about uh, uh, some tankers and whatnot, and I called Zintoid, who is my teammate. I was like, yeah, he's a great AOTG tanker or some nonsense. So... Dude, I definitely understand. It happens. It happens. Um, let's see here. Uh, first question for you, Mr. Danger Cow, is not going to be the what is your favorite color. <laughs> I messed around with beforehand, though I am curious. Let's uh, see. Uh, Good yeah, choice. Yes, yeah, same. I, I figured. Hakuli colors. Well, you know, I want to kick it off since we're talking about uh, we're kind of opening with uh, community speak and whatnot you know, uh, getting to meet the developers and the things of that sort, and the things that we like and don't like. What is your favorite part of being in the Battlefield community? What is it about Battlefield for you that just that just drew you in, that just pulled you into this game and, you know, stole your heart away? Um, well, I, my roots are in COD, right? I mean, spit, spit and all that sort of stuff, but... Um to give you my my intro to it was uh when modern warfare came out and this is quite a sensitive subject because it it killed our community and that was um that cod moved away from having dedicated servers and went to party system servers uh and that's a hugely hot topic right now right it killed the community i was in i was in a, in a community called angry employees we were a bunch of relatively uh mature mature guys um sort of the 30s and uh, Modern Warfare came along, it, it, it knocked, knocked that sort of thing out. And so we kind of went our separate ways. And I came across uh, Bad Company 2. Um, I'd messed around with 1942 uh, uh, and 2143. And, um, but Bad Company 2 seemed to be the game that I thought, well, actually, you know, well, this is really good. It's really in depth. There's big maps, there's lots of vehicles, there's huge emphasis on tactical team play, which is what we liked. Um, and I said to the guys, listen, you know, let's do this. And, and just weirdly, none of them really bought into it. Uh, and I came across the community that I'm with now. It's a, um, company, uh, a well, community called uh, British Sergeant's Mess. And um, initially, I was banned because I was a sniper, um, because my system wouldn't take the up-close stuff. So as soon as I got nailed to an MCOM station, uh, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do anything. So I stayed off and was the sniper. And they didn't, they didn't like that very and then I got a better system. They said, right, now you've got no excuse. Come and join us on the, on the, on the you know, <laughs> put your big boy pants on and come and join us on the P, on the PTFO side of things. And I loved it. And I just, one of the, the thing I love about the community in the game is it really allows you, when you've got a good squad and a good bunch of mates, there is nothing better than the, the thrill of turning a bad situation around or, or really dominating a particular flag or saying, right, we're going to change the game now that we've come in we're a hundred tickets behind. Let's get let's get on it. Let's let's turn this game around and really make a a good effort of it. And those moments, those victories, those hard fought battles, even if they're a loss, if they're a narrow loss, you go, God, we were so close. We dominated that flag, or we really took apart that tank squad, or just those moments are what Battlefield is built for, and what this community can give you when you play with those those guys and girls. And I think outside of the game, it's just such a wonderfully all-embracing, all-encompassing community. And I, I know there are those out there who have a, uh, a naysaying attitude. And, you know, there are always bad apples in every bunch. 
but the, for the large part, the people that that I got to hang out with at EA Play, the people I got to hang out with um, at uh, in Stockholm and then various other events have just all been fantastic fun. And it's been great to go out and learn about them and, you know, hear about their families and, you know, their woes because we suffer together, we succeed together. And I think that is the wonderful part of the community outside of the game itself. I got to say, man, you're, <laughs> you are a man after my own heart. That's pretty much what my own answer to that question would be. I've, I've got to admit, I live for those heart pounding, you know, clutch moments when your squad really comes. And it even happens with the quote unquote blueberries from time to time. You'll end up in a squad with random people, but you'll start communicating and working together to really turn the tides of a bad situation, like you said. And it feels incredible. And it just when it happens you just get this sense of this is what it's all about and i have not found another game that that where that's possible for one thing and then the community outside the game like you say is it's it's on its own level i've never seen anything like it anywhere else and uh yeah for me i'm right there i'm in the same boat with you man that's that's exactly how i feel about the game and it is just it's incredible i've never seen anything like it and i'm excited to, to watch it keep growing i think that we will end up with some of those uh, community events that you guys were discussing just a little while ago. I think, uh, uh, you know, the community is growing into that. Give it another year, tops, mm -hmm. you know, and we'll start seeing some of these expos. And hey, that's just my personal opinion, but great answer, dude. I mean, that, that, that was spot on right there. I um, think one, so one thing, if I can just touch on, Battlefield is really good at developing people uh, and developing their PTFO and their teamwork mentality. I think it, it, it demands... A higher level of cohesion a lot especially relative to other games out there you know your call of duties your halos uh the, the, that's what's made battlefield a unique game and, and that's what's enabled it to grow because it provides a whole another level of of entertainment and features and things for you, for you to have to think about it's not just about simply running around who's got the quickest trigger finger it's it's a far more intelligent game than that and you've really got to be able to go away and think outside of the box and what we'll be able to show with some of the footage that we've captured for sergeant danger cow to go through later is is that these guys what enables them to win as players is that they think outside of the box they will approach things in ways that no one will have thought about before and that's that's how you have to think when you're a team leader when you're when you're a squad leader you've got to be able to develop yourself uh be dynamic and approach things differently depending on the situation and time and um, battlefield really enables people to do that and a lot of this transfers over into the community itself and how the community interacts and you've got occasions like this tonight where we've got sergeant danger cow coming on board doing a, a an interview of ourselves everyone is about cohesion cooperation and communication and i think a lot of that really does come from battlefield the game oh for sure absolutely and i think the thing about the, the thing the advantage the battlefield has over games like rainbow six and to uh, a degree fortnite and that lot is that there's a real ebb and flow fortnite is is a story in one uh, short moment which is which makes it so broadcastable so you've got the beginning will he survive does he survive oh he survived that will he survive the next bit and he eventually either dies or he wins right whereas battlefield allows an ebb and flow and a real kind of right we've got we've done this bit but we need to get the other bit now and will will enough people realize that we have to get that bit for it to happen and i think that's the great thing about battlefield is it allows because of the length of the match and the scope of the maps that it gives you that advantage to, to kind of really push for uh, an alternative solution to what's happening at the time. And that's not allowed in games like Rainbow Six where once you're shot, you're dead and that's it. Yeah. I mean, uh, so just looking back at sort of previous battlefields, for you, what would have to be with your most memorable moment? Uh, in in me personally, or what, yeah, what just for you know? as an individual, sort of, uh, have you ever been a part of a game where anything crazy's gone down and that's just stuck with you for life? Um, I don't know crazy per se. I once played a game with uh, a, a content creator called Luton. You've probably mm. seen around, and we were playing on lockers on Good BF4. map. Good map. 
and it is a good map if you know what you do if you don't just sit in the, the sort of central bit and blast away if you actually take the time to scout around the outside you know it's, it's a great map and we it was him me and i think a couple of other guys who were in his um discord and we were on this one side and they were outnumbering outnumbering the other team by four players and they were 200 tickets ahead we were sorry 200 tickets ahead and Luton said why don't we go across to the other team and see if we can't bring it back and win the game and we <laughs> did simply because we were coordinated we were on comms which is obviously ever, always mm -hmm. a huge advantage mm -hmm. but we had a medic we had a, a you know a sniper we had a couple of ammo guys in fact we had two medics one ammo and a, a sniper and it just you know the sniper was calling out places he was spotting doing what a sniper is supposed to do <laughs> and um and uh, you know the medics were doing a medic train but the support guy was standing back on the on you know i was a medic and you know we had a support guy he was just standing back with the ammo crates hitting the lmg suppressing while we moved forward and we pulled the game back and we won and that is one of the greatest not the greatest moments per se, you know, like, oh, wow. Because Dama Van Peek, for me, the first time I ever jumped off Dama Van Peek will be one of the best moments of a Battlefield series. But um, I guess you know what I'm talking about with Dama Van Peek. That, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah. Right. Okay, right. Iconic, I, I think. It really Brilliant. Is. Cinematic, um, you name it. Yeah, absolutely. So so that was that was my first kind of like, wow, I really love that. Um but that that match where we came back from 200 tickets down and just as a matter of ptfo and team play pulled it back showed what battlefield actually is about and absolutely it's not just about the bombs and the nades it's about mm. thinking the brain is the most dangerous weapon absolutely and it, and it really is that 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 added layer to the game that i think has enabled it to give it it just this awesome longevity that we're seeing the game's almost coming up to 20 years now and i do believe the next release will put us at that 20 year mark so uh it's uh you know you don't get you don't have a game with this amount of longevity unless they're doing something right unless they have a lot of people uh, behind them enjoying what they do and what they take away the money involved you know i was just looking at the credits the other day and the amount of people involved in creating uh battlefield it's it's inc it, it, it just is incredible uh, there is a heck of a lot of people so uh, all those people have obviously got a wage uh, an office space and uh, that's before you actually get into the nitty-gritty of how they create the game we got texas from pal uh, coming in there representing phoenix elite aerial league we've also got impulse stream jumping in there impulse stream to a lot of our graphics here at the hardcore league and especially for shots fire podcasting we also got mr attila the, the Jew dropping in with the free month, oh sorry, the two month subscription in a row, my dude, thank you very much that is a much appreciated uh, so yeah, we've got some great people in chat this evening, no doubt we will have some questions uh, from you guys for Sergeant Danger Cow to answer, for those of you who are just joining in, this is Mr. Sergeant Danger Cow who is a renowned battlefield pilot, uh, he's been on PC, uh, Dice Friend and EA Game Changer uh, but he's also head uh, admin for uh, British Sergeant's Mess. Uh, believe it or not, guys, Danger Cow isn't actually a cow. So uh, there's something to yeah. think on. <laughs> it's a shocker. It's a shocker. Because <laughs> yeah, uh, that would be pretty cool. If we could do an interview with a cow that had the ability to play Battlefield, I feel that would be a very unique interview. Um, I don't know what kind of questions I would need to Come be on, going for. Are you a Bijan free or are you a heifer? I don't know the difference, to be honest. <laughs> I'm a lactose intolerant cow. It's not a life to lead. Oh, damn. Oh, that's that horrible. That, that wouldn't just be the worst. Well, well, the you, gods what, hated you that day. That. Oh, yeah. No, I'll tell you what. <laughs> All about that soya milk. <laughs> oh god, I've never never tried it to be honest. Um, thankfully, I've never had to have that experience. Uh, but uh, I can imagine it's horrendous. No, I don't know. I mean, I, I just miss I miss my dairy products too much. I live on cheese and bacon, so oh, yeah, yeah, I can I can uh, I can do this. So okay, say you've got a, a good, you're going well, you're having a good game. You're between matches, and you want to keep this good game going. Do you have any rituals? Do you have anything that you do for luck, or anything that you like? You know, do you have your cup put in a certain way on the desk, or 
Is there any kind of, um, do you like the lighting at a certain level to really to enable you to really hit that PTFO? Uh, I, uh, I, uh, I play Battlefield like I have sex, lights off, shirts on. Um, but, uh... Hi, British. <laughs> 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 I, 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 get I, it I get it, I get it, I get it. But no, I, do you know what? I, I, I tend to tr hope that the same people that I like playing with uh, are on um, because we form a pretty good unit. Um, I do have, I have a, I tend to have two drinks. Um, I'll have a coffee and a, and a water. Um, if I, because I, I don't, I'm not particularly of interest, but I, I do a thing where I have a month on and a month off. Uh, the booze. I'm meant to be on the month off, but I've got a nice, as I spent to you earlier, I got a nice little present this afternoon with a bottle of uh, whiskey. So I'm just sampling the goods to make sure it's okay, you know. Um, but yeah, I do, I don't know. I mean, not rituals per se, but I just, I do like having, uh, I like being quite well hydrated. So I play a lot of squash and racquetball and stuff like that. So um, I like to be hydrated. So I like to have lots of water around me. Um, and my, my daughter made me a mouse mat at school some couple of years ago so i i used that as a coaster but i've turned it upside down so the picture she drew on it doesn't get spoiled but it works as a very good coaster because i've got an enormous like meter long uh mouse mat uh, sort of meter long and, and yeah i believe you've got a massive desk i don't know where i've got that yeah. information from but i do believe you have a <laughs> massive desk yeah it's it, it um i was very lucky to inherit a lot of stuff uh historical stuff from my grandfather um, it's my father predeceased my grandfather, um, and so my grandfather basically left a lot of stuff to me. And the desk I've got is an old partner's desk from the bank. Oh, brilliant! That he uh, uh, that he used to um, have involvement with, and uh, or I should say, our family did. And it is uh, two meters uh, from end to end, and about a meter seventy-five deep. Um, so there's a lot of space on it. Let's yeah. put it that way. No, that's. Uh... That's uh, that's quite interesting, really, and and I, I always I think with old stuff as well, it's always nice to have old stuff around. Um, I just I, I'm a real fan of just anything that's pre nineteen sort of fifties, really. And uh, we there was some, especially at the turn of the century. I, I know, sorry, I do realise this isn't a podcast about uh, turn of the century <laughs> Anti furniture. <laughs> we can go there, man. We could totally go there. My wife and I are restoring Hardcore a 1940s anti. flower center thing right now. Oh, wow. Like a coffee hut. So, yeah, it's really cool. I, it's, I find it interesting that you guys are into that. How, how well, sweet, the, the, how sweet this, this is. This <laughs> desk is... Um, hey, Texas pal, thanks very much, man. I appreciate coming out. Uh, sorry, I don't want to talk across the producer here, but he's obviously directing that at me, but I just wanted to say that I've noticed the comment. And... Uh, Bad, bad for your internet, man. But this, uh, this, um, this desk is from the early 1800s. Oh wow! Oh, wow! Yeah, that's impressive. That is really impressive. A little bit of history right there. When you think the amount of uh, information that's gone over that desk, you, you know, uh, people's lives that have been changed with a flick of a pen, and now you're just gaming on it. <laughs> <laughs> But no, that's that's awesome. <laughs> that's it. That's it. You're destroying destroying pilots' lives. So, yeah. I mean, yeah, that's it. I mean, that is that's just wonderful. And to have that little bit of history there in in your house, just to be able to sort of call on, is just amazing. Me as a history buff, I, that's the sort of thing I'd love, especially as it's come from your family. Uh, you know, that's 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 also something that you're going to be able to pass down through your through the generations, hopefully onto your kids. So, uh, no, absolutely, my dude, that is brilliant. Um, but yeah, we uh, we've got a few questions to put to you from the community. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now a couple of these guys, uh, we've gone out. We've asked uh, Texas, uh, who is the uh, he is the community lead for Phoenix Elite Aerial League, mm -hmm. and uh, they are pretty much exclusively the only aerial league that I'm aware of in Battlefield currently active at the moment, and they have been killing it with some pretty awesome events recently. We've had the uh, f uh, Flight Path to Battlefield Five. Uh, tournament which uh, finished last week um, and it, sorry which finished two weeks ago brilliant fun um, myself and Dead Eye were shout casting it and uh, we had some great results um, 
uh, at the end of that campaign. Uh, we've also had seen this season one and season two of uh, the Phoenix Elite Aerial League both kicked off brilliantly, and we've got some footage to go over shortly uh, for you from those uh, those tournaments. <clears throat> Uh, but in the meantime, um, we've got Dead April representing Ace, Ace Pilots, um, and he's 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 asking here, uh, what does he feel needs? Uh, sorry, what do you feel needs to be uh, to change to make Battlefield Five planes more reliable? And just uh, in reliable. general, wow, uh, that's a that's an interesting one. That's a very open question. Um, a lot is the simple answer. I look, I'm not a I'm not a fan of the upgrade tree system um specializations for guns yeah. vehicles yeah sorry, sorry no, specializations sure. um i'm not a fan of that i don't think you know the thing with well let's start with let's just very briefly touch on guns because they're basically invisible attachments these specializations for um for guns they're basically you know you can choose high rate of fire which is essentially a magazine upgrade or you can change more stability, which is a muzzle break, uh, or more, sorry, less climb, so that's a muzzle break, or less drift, that's a that's a hand stop, which we used to have in Battlefield 4. That's true. But they, the way they've done that is they've had an either-or situation, which is DICE's policy for build, for building these things is rock, paper, and scissors. That's, that's the way they do it. You've got to have something that combats something that combats something. And they've done it with vehicles as well, and I, I just can't get my head around it because I do not understand why planes particularly have to be um, why they have to be upgraded for maneuverability a plane should be maneuverable by default That's you, you shouldn't have to upgrade to get maneuverability and I'm not sure there's any pilot that will choose of a, fi of a fighter pilot who will choose a plane not to be more maneuverable which means that you are forced not forced but you are pretty heavily leaning or weighted towards choosing one particular element of the tree or your specialization which means you're going to sacrifice something else because you have to have that maneuverability and i just think that's a bit bonkers they've never done this before and i don't think they should have done it i don't i, I really just i can't get to grips with it i like the bf1 system of having a particular you know you had three variants on the fight of the trench uh bomber the uh um bomber hunter or bomber killer and the dogfighter and with the attack plane you had two variants you had the ground support or the tank hunter uh and then you had two different types of bombers but they all did roughly one job and they all had one loadout there was no maneuverability upgrades there was no engine upgrades there was no different cho choices of guns you know and the way they've balanced very heavily in front of it sorry in the way of me 109s rather than the spitfires the mark one and the mark two the mark a and b sorry is just weird just just make because then it, it's it's it doesn't become fair it's not fair it's not uh about a pilot's skill it's about what plane he's flying and i don't think that's right because dogfighter leagues they tend to have um trench fighter only loadouts that's part of their mantra because it's the least uh biased um effect of plane because the dogfighter has the incendiary bullets and the bomber killer has um uh, uh what do you call it instant repair so they have those two variants have different um uh, sort of what's the word advantages whereas the trench fighter has pure guns and that's why most most leagues or most pilots I know of who are pure door fighters will use only the trench fighter or trench bomber, sorry. And they you can't do that in BFB. You're you're choosing one. If you've got an ME uh, ME one hundred and nine, then you you've got a massive advantage over Spitfires. And it basically boils down to that because of the way the game has been built. So what they need to do is balance the games out so they're even by default. And and frankly, I would say get rid of the upgrade specializations, but. That's what I think they need to do, but they won't. Sure, no. I agree with you 100%, actually. And uh, it's it's not surprising to me that that was your response. I've actually heard that quite a bit since launch, or, you know, uh, since we've had the opportunity to get to know the planes. That's been the general consensus so far is, man, you've really got to go one way or the other on the tree, and it doesn't, it just never feels truly balanced, uh, you know, in the air. 
it's not like it was in one where, like you say, you've got these specific specifications to go with, and then it's a more well-rounded and, you know, quote unquote, fair fight. It's more based on the, uh, the pilot's individual talent and, you know, field IQ, uh, as opposed to how he stacks his plane. I personally have to agree with you. And I really wish that, I hope that in the next release, uh, with those planes that they go back to the formula they used in one. I thought it was really, really good. But that's just my piece. Yeah, I th I'm not sure. It's an, I don't think it's an uncommon feeling, particularly you know, amongst the pilots. I will say. So, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. Um, yeah, I think you've made touched on some very valuable points. So I have to say, the special specializations, from my point of view, I'm not a massive fan of myself. Um, we'll see what they do with it long term. I know that nothing necessarily stays fixed for these first couple months anyway, and a lot of it does depend on the feedback of the community and what the community wants because the devs are very keen to, you know, capture what 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 people want here from the game, and uh, that's that's obviously going to be of quite quite a lot of importance, really. Um, <clears throat> So from yourself, uh, again, uh, are you, uh, are you, you've already pretty much answered this, but we'll just touch on it again. Are you a joystick or a controller or a keyboard and mouse person? Uh, keyboard and mouse all the keyboard way. Keyboard and mouse all the way. What's, uh, what's your reasoning behind that? Um, I just find it more accurate. I just, you know, a lot of people find it easier to push pull back on a stick I, I i think it depends largely on your configuration if you like me i have w and s as my um, pitch up pitch down um and a and d is my rudder and then roll is on my mouse but i find aiming with the mouse a lot easier um always will do uh you know i don't play fps games on uh, on a controller i only play sports games um i find it the fine tuning of aiming particularly in a plane a lot easier and it's funny actually when i've been playing on air assault on bf1 uh with a couple of my uh my good mates in the planes like kieran pool um he's a, a, a much much better pilot than me but he um he said to me you know i just i just kbm all the time i said yep yeah, absolutely and you get when you play against people in air assault they always say oh you know you must be hacking because you can't be that accurate i said no i'm just using the keyboard and mouse and what's it? What's then interesting is whether or not people will go. Will they go one of one, one of two ways? One is no, screw you, you're hacking, or two is really? Oh, what are you doing? How do I help? You know, how do I do that? And whatever. So it's um, it's interesting that people. Some people will ask for help, and I will always, always, always help those who ask for it, um, and those who don't can jog on as far as I'm <laughs> I, don't, I don't care you know I, it's some internet person i really could not care what they think of me but um all i know is a i don't cheat and b if you want my help i'll give it to you well there it is ladies yes. and gentlemen uh, that sounds sounds like quite a good attitude to have to be honest because you do have people out there who are willing to just jump on the negativity train straight away and just assume that because someone has the you know very good kill death ratio because they got a kill that they perceive they shouldn't have got um there's a lot of people out there who will just jump on the whole hacking train generally i think hacking especially console side is very much a rare occurrence and it just so happens to be that people genuinely do have a lot of skill in this game and have, have finessed the roles that they're playing uh, to become extremely good at them. Uh, from an aerial point of view, though, I do find having the altitude, sorry, uh, the speed, uh, the angle, and the distance, those are the three factors that weigh in the most as to whether you're going to land those shots or whether those shots are going to go. Uh, in front or behind the uh, fighter. Um, in terms of defensive maneuverability, though, uh, uh, what would you say is a, is, a, is a good sort of way of, of getting someone off your six o'clock off your tail during a dogfight? Uh, just a lot of um, rotation. I tend to go into a split S and then use the speed from that to go uh, to start climbing again and then do a sort of top end rotate right and then rotate left almost immediately and come and then go back under whoever it is I'm going to depending on where they're coming from you try to aim towards their their noise their engine noise mm. and then go back under them and it's all just about creating separation from between uh, you and them so you can get back onto their tail um, I got to be honest it, it, that depends it will depend obviously if you're if I'm if I'm in a conquest game 
I will head for um, for buildings and AA and friendly stuff. He will no doubt shoot the other guy and try yeah. and put him off his aim a little bit. But in air assault, it's. It, it, I think if you come up against a good pilot who can turn inside whatever you're doing, you're kind of screwed anyway. Because I think there isn't enough. There's there's not like in BF3. Um, I think in BF4 as well, you had throttle control. I can't remember. Did you have throttle control in BF4? Uh, yes, that, yes, we did. Was, yeah, we did. Yeah, it, we could yeah. still stall out if you needed to yeah. and let people shoot past you. So the stall out is useful occasionally, but so many people stall out far too early that you're just sat there and well, <laughs> just shoot the yeah. hell out of you. Um, <laughs> and I, I love it when you see, and you know people are doing it because you see, you know, A, you, you can get a sense that they're doing it and B, you see the propeller go and then you just sit there and go, thank you very much, that's an easy kill. The only thing that pissed me off was that they would inevitably, the Hulk of their aircraft would have smashed into yours because they've gone vertical, so you're vertical. And then the aircraft gun does, does 75 damage to your aircraft. Um, <laughs> but but yeah, I, I tended to find that, to be honest, a lot of the time, just breaking right and then just maybe going up a little bit and up a little bit every sort of three quarter turn, you would try something. Um, three quarters are quite important, I found, on those those turns it tended to be that's when you just lost sight of where the guy was for yeah. half a second and if you could elevate a touch it would just give you the elevation to then try and get the speed and the angle that you mm. needed to come back down again so you know i bf5 is a whole different kettle of fish i'm not i i can't get on board the, the planes in bfp i love flying a bomb because it's it's for the memes but Fighter dog fighting is if you've got an ME one oh nine on you and you're a Spitfire, forget about it because you can yeah. throw ping pong balls at that, that ME one oh nine as far as I'm concerned, you'll do more damage. Yeah. Than a Spitfire. No, absolutely. And I think you've touched on a good point there. Uh, you uh, to a certain extent, Battlefield One and World War One planes <laughs> Uh, biplanes they enabled you did have that certain level of maneuverability although you didn't have the speed factor world war Two comes along and we're now changing this up we're now sort of going more uh you know less at sort of 100 miles per hour now it's more like 300 maybe even 400 miles per hour depending on uh, whether you're diving or not and you just don't, haven't got quite got the same level of maneuverability so it's it's i think it's going to be more about positioning yourself especially on games like conquest where the air is very important if you've got a fighter up you've got a bomber up the fighter can cover the bomber and obviously the bomber can assist with the ground and if you've got someone who knows their lanes knows where tanks are going to be coming in and uh, just knows how to drop those bombs accurately they are going to be an extremely dangerous duo uh, and i'm really looking forward to seeing uh, moving forward into the competitive element of battlefield 5 once we've had rsp release uh, i do believe the direction of where the dog fighting is going to go will be quite interesting especially from my point of view as a shoutcaster um it's going to enable us to really have some very high octane dramatic moments uh where these these planes are coming into close contact with each other uh so yeah i think that's definitely going to be quite an interesting uh interesting feature to see we've got shadow coming in though with a question as more uh competitive players teams learn the game where do you guys see the meta going at this version uh, of the game can differ through game mode, of course. Uh, not too sure what you're asking there, dude. So the meta, are you asking sort of just generally where where people are sort of going to go with the tactics and strategy uh, post post RSP? Is that where you're going with that shadow? I'm not too sure. Sorry, dude. <clears throat> the, yeah, it could be the weapons or or something. I mean, don't forget, shadow, that you've got the um, patch coming up. So I think we'll let's see what let's see what day, this day. 14 day whatever patch they're calling it nowadays patch happens because mm. that's going to change a lot including you know there's there's discussion about the ttk um and i think the ttk is going to be an issue um because it, it's you know the moment we I, I feel like i don't know about you guys i think we're at closed alpha two ish maybe uh ttk um, it's certainly not, uh, it's not far off it if it is. Um, and just for those of you who are unaware, guys, we're talking about time to kill. Um, so how many shots you have to put into someone before they go down. And uh, right now, a lot of, uh, especially veteran Battlefield players, do believe uh, there is a consensus that the TTK is a little bit on the high side. Uh, there are certain weapons out there that do seem to struggle. 
uh, definitely uh, the RE7 is not one of them. <laughs> and I believe that is one of the <laughs> weapons that is going to be getting uh, a little bit of a nerfing. Um, but I have to be honest, I play a lot as medic myself if I'm not up in a plane. And I do find that the medic weapons are just slightly underrated com relative to other classes. Whether that's something that we're going to see changed post patch uh, December 7th, I'm not too sure. We'll see though. Uh, but uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do December fourth and uh, where the game goes, uh, based on obviously everybody's feedback. Uh, if, if I can just jump in, if you mean sorry, because he's just said about tactics. Words. My feeling is that um, because the medic only has SMGs, uh, there's no variants for the medics uh, at the moment. We don't know if they will do because they took the guard away from the medic and gave it to assault. Maybe I do believe um, they did. Yeah, and my my honest feeling is we are going to see the um, the assault class again go back to being the meta yeah. in that regard um, because if they increase the TTK, which um, is you know a possibility, because the, the TTK is actually not the problem here. The TTD is the problem, yeah. which is time to die. Uh, for those who don't know, so because of that, there is there is a problem. People are complaining, saying, "Oh, I'm getting one shot hit, you know, killed or whatever from a from a you know sten or something." You go, "Well, that's that's not that's TTD," and and you can't react, and you get one one frame killed and all this sort of stuff. So, I think in all honesty, what we're going to find the meta is that the meta goes back to assault uh, class because they're the best AR weapons within Battlefield franchise traditionally, Battlefield 3, mm. Battlefield 4, Battlefield 1, now Battlefield 5, assault weapons have been generally the best uh, across the board in terms of mid-range to long-range yeah. to punch power. And I think the meta will go assault for certain. Um, and uh, and I think it will be a question of uh, then the tactics will be led by what people have got their assault sure. setups. Yeah. No, absolutely. I think it's going to be about enabling uh, the, the the theme of the whole squad. The objective of the whole squad is pretty much going to be to enable those assaults to get round. Uh, and if you focus yourself and your entire squad around the sort of basis of keeping your assault alive, keeping your assault full of ammo, keeping him full of meds, and uh, providing a, an anchoring point for him to spawn on, then uh, that is a uh, pretty good way of running a squad. It gives you gives you a central point objective, everyone knows who they're defending, where their defence is from, and if the squad can form itself around that central defence point of the assault uh, based on uh, his location, that is something that's going to enable that squad to uh, to push forward uh, quite effectively. Um, but we do have some clips here that I just need to run past you, I think, because uh, I'd be sure. really interested to hear your opinion. On, uh, th now this is uh, this is something a little bit different. This is clips from uh, the Phoenix Elite Aerial League's uh, events that have been hosted. They've had a number of them, as we mentioned previously, and uh, these are going to be some of our competitive pilots, some of the best pilots in Battlefield, I have to say, having uh, shoutcasted many of their matches. These guys really are on point. And I can't wait to see this uh, expanded out to uh, PC and PS4 as well, which hopefully is something that we'll be able to see in the future. Uh, but uh, I'm going to start off with uh, this clip, and this is uh, a pilot called Dipopotamus going up against uh, another pilot called Mendoz. Uh, we've got some pretty interesting names out here, so. Uh, yeah, I'd <laughs> but I'm just going to throw this up. Here you go, guys, check it out. This, he's getting closer to the ground, and uh, I think Aztec is really struggling to get out of this one. Some absolutely epic dogfighting. He's gone for the stool, and that's just about giving him a little bit of time to get out, but Dipopotamus has managed to counter that stool. By stalling himself, giving him the room, and he's managed to kill there. And that was an absolutely outstanding bit of dog it, fighting you? there by Dipper Bottom. This is a two to one. Two to one? Yeah, so that was a. Yeah, he just got behind him, he had nothing. He couldn't do anything. Once you stalled out, you've lost all your. Your. Uh, your momentum. Uh, and he, he obviously thought he was a bit closer, and he wasn't vertical enough to pull that off, but that was. Um, yeah. You could, the kill. you could almost see him going for that stall at one stage and then I think he almost has a change of heart as soon as he starts taking fire and then yeah I think at that stage especially with the way that uh, Dip and his colleague were just trailing them 
these guys were just giving them very little uh, maneuvering uh, ability there. And, and let's face it, once you've got hard, one plane is hard enough to get off your six o'clock, but uh, two planes, it's it's more or less impossible. Um, you've always got someone who can go left and someone who can go right. Uh, but yeah, Dip is one of our uh, pilots. He's a very good pilot, uh, it has to be said, and gets some fantastic kills. Definitely uh, gets into the uh, into the latter rounds of the tournament. Um, and Mendoz as well, also quite a good pilot. I can't remember who actually ended up taking that specific match, uh, but I uh, do remember it being uh, quite a good match um, and with uh, quite a lot occurring in it. Uh, the next one, we've got... Um, all right, check out the name. Hilary Swanks. <laughs> versus Baggins. Savage pilot. <laughs> All right, so we're going to throw off Hillary Swanks, uh, and Hillary Swanks is going to be going up against Baggins here. And uh, from what I remember, this was Erkut one is back off. A, and is uh, he going to be able to manage to get this hit there? He risks uh, getting a shot on his there. friendly bomber there, but he also oh. manages to get a hit. Welsey's on the turn there. That was absolutely epic flying and shooting by Hillary Swanks. So uh, that was uh, just a short clip there, but um, yeah, that was Hillary Swanks coming in round again on the six o'clock of uh, Baggins. Uh, for some reason we had a bomber up there. Not too sure why there was a yeah. bomber. I think that was quite late on in the rounds, and the team had already won. Or I'm, I'm not too sure. <laughs> they were it look, confident. It looked like the it looked like the um, well, let's say victim uh, had uh, had clipped the bomber there uh, just before the uh, the engagement. He clipped, I think. He or she clipped it. Uh, it looked like, and uh, and once you once you've hit something, obviously you you've taken out a good chunk of health anyway. Um, but yeah, deadly at the end there. No 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 quarter given and uh, taken out with a plomb. Yeah, Sw yeah, Swank is not known for missing either. That that is one hell of an accurate accurate pilot right there. As we just saw, that's something you'll see from him every single time he gets in the air. It's just a was that a tank hunter set up? Uh, let's check yeah. it again. Yeah. Let's check it again. Okay, it's back up. Check. Yep. And is he going to be uh, able to manage to get this hit there? He risks and, uh, uh, getting a shot on bombs. his friendly bomber there, but Boom. he also manages to get a hit. Welsey's on the turn there. That was... Yeah, there it is. Attack plane. Yeah, that's yeah, incredible. So clips the, is that, uh, mate, well, no, he does clip it. And yeah, just bang. That's a hell of a shot as well, because that's, that's on a rotation. So uh, he's... he's, he's, he's uh, Whoever the pilot is, he's just shot down. And he's clipped the bomber, the bomber, which or throws your your parabolics off anyway. So you're kind of um, yeah. That's a no, absolutely. All right, let's check out. We've got Mordred coming up, uh, going up again. Oh no, sorry, no wrong wrong clip. Oh, there we go. There it is. Just all over his six. Urologist is going to stall though, and it's going to work out. Fungus is going to go right by him, and that's going to line Dum Dum up for a perfect shot on him. Very impressive maneuvers coming in from the LRRP boys. They're just making it look pretty like a little air ballet they've got going on um, with their tandem combo on Lillian, and then that beautiful stall coming in from the urologist uh, to line up Dum Dum for a perfect so shot. Lillian him. now, oh, coming in. And yeah, he's broken contact. I'm not sure where he's what he's doing to be honest because he's lost him yeah he gave him the edge yeah that's it and that was of course Mr. Dum Dum himself there uh, providing us with one of his clips uh, so again what was going on there Dum Dum tell us talk us through that so urologist and I actually had been uh, struggling a little bit we didn't uh that was our first time, I think, flying together, and we knew both of us had taken a little bit of damage in that situation right there, but we managed to get down uh, their second pilot, take down one of the pilots, and I did lose, I um, can't remember who it was that, was that that we were fighting with there. I lost him for a second, but urologist and I were communicating pretty heavy on it, so we figured we'd go for the split, try and get him to chase me a little bit, use me for bait so urologist could line up the shot and take him out before the other pilot came back in, and I think it worked if I remember correctly. But that was a uh, interesting little fight for us. That that was our first and only time flying in the uh, flight path to Battlefield Five, and it was it was an experience. Like, no joke, yeah. it was something else. Yeah, no, uh, you guys absolutely beast mode did it as well, which I'd expect nothing less from Long Range Recon Patrol, who, uh, of course, are one of the uh, many active teams involved with the Hardcore League and the Phoenix Elite Aerial League. Uh, we've got a few LRP 
in the chat this evening as well. I do notice, I think Attila was in there earlier dropping the sub. We've got Mr. Boyer. And uh, for those of you who don't know Boyer, Boyer is a member of Hardcore League staff and he's been uh, gaming for a number of years now. Uh, Boyer is the patriarch of Battlefield on Xbox, uh, coming in at 57 years of age. So we'd just like to welcome him to the chat and say hello, hope everything's going all right. Boyer's not been very well recently, uh, struggling with a bad back and a number of other things. Uh, but uh, we, we, we love Boyer and uh, he is the people's princess. We've got uh, Rias Peters <laughs> coming in there. Hey, HTL friends. What is going on, my dude? Welcome to the stream. We've got Fiend there as well. Still no love for Fiend. No, no one loves you, Fiend. I'm sorry, dude. Fiend hey, also I... member of staff. Go on, my dude. I just want to say something for my Lerpa Derps and for everyone in the league. You know, Dum Dum loves you guys. And boy, I tell you what, I got to drop that caca caca because I know Attila likes it. So uh, it's it's I'm super happy to see you guys in there. Nothing but love for you. Boo, you get to feel better, man. And that's it. I just wanted to drop that for uh, the community. I love these people. It yeah, it's I don't I don't think it's too much of an issue with old uh, boy. I think he's just he's you know he's he's in his autumn years at the end of the day. Poor guy, you know he's he's doing all right though. He still gets on the battlefield and smashes it with us young guns. <laughs> Alright, we got DX yeah. Mimsy dropping in there as well. Guys, if you're not familiar with DX Mimsy, DX Mimsy is one of our graphic designers here at the Hardcore League and uh, has done a lot of the graphics recently for some of the events and is going to be doing a lot of the graphics coming up, looking to the future. Uh, making us stand out there, guys, on uh, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, you name it. We've got those uh, those graphics locked down. And I noticed as well, we've got Impulse Streams who do a lot of our video and a lot of our adverts as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, guys, what an, what an absolutely fantastic cast we've had this evening. All right, guys, and that pretty much wraps things up. Uh, I'm going to let everybody go because I know you all have uh, turkeys to go and eat, turkey sandwiches, turkey curry to go and make uh, from yesterday's Thanksgiving. But it has been an absolutely fantastic evening here of... Uh, Battlefield podcasting and if you've enjoyed yourself guys don't forget to hit that follow hit that like hit that share hit that subscribe let your friends know especially if they are involved as a community that there is a Battlefield esports arena this is your opportunity your platform to showcase your skills you are our passion guys and uh, what we're developing here is something it's made by the community for the community uh, we've got a lot of big news coming up in the uh, coming weeks and months uh, surrounding eSports Battlefield. Uh, so hopefully we'll be getting Dead and It's Mason here in at some stage. Um, in the meantime, guys, don't forget to check out all those uh, offline, uh, non-live interviews that we do with all our team leaders and all the staff members, uh, courtesy of The Real Dum Dum. Absolutely lovely gentleman. I'll tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, sir. And uh, if I may, I just want to throw this out there, a couple of things for uh, Sergeant Danger Cow. One, thanks so much for doing this with us, man. It was an absolute pleasure to talk with you. It was just really, really cool. I love the opportunity to get to know people, uh, especially guys like you. That was a lot of fun. And also, I hope maybe one day we could see you come out and compete, maybe even just once. I think that might be yeah. pretty, uh, I think people might like to take a look at that. and. Guys, if For you're sure. watching this, you're listening, you need to go check his YouTube channel out. He's got some really good stuff on there. So, uh, yeah, thanks again for showing up, man. That was just way cool. And I look forward to seeing you on the battlefield, my dude. Oh, man, it's been an absolute blast. And thank you very much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's been great fun talking with you guys and actually uh, listening to what other, other like-minded people have uh, with regard to the way things should be panning out. But it's been great fun. So thank you so much for having me. And of course, guys, don't go anywhere because uh, we're not we're not going to be uh, shutting the channel down just yet. We're going to be firing you over to the Battlefield stream. So don't forget to tell them that the Hardcore League sent you and we send a love. Um, in the meantime, it, thank you so much for you guys turning up and uh, watching us. As I say, uh, a week, two weeks today, uh, we sh we've got uh, Shadux penciled in. Shadux is an EA game changer and dice friend. He's very, very, very knowledgeable about weapons, and he's gonna. This is gonna be one that you team leaders are gonna really want to 
log into and uh, check out because there's going to be a lot of information on how you guys are going to need to structure your teams, how you how you can consider uh, different weapons, and uh, he's going to really just break things down for us. Uh, in the meantime, guys, as I say, don't go anywhere. Join the raid, and uh, thank you very much for stopping on by. My name's KLW Hitman Pike. Uh, joining me tonight was my colleague and uh, assistant producer, the real Dum Dum. And uh, thank you very much, as Dum Dum just mentioned, to Sergeant Danger Cow for popping in and giving us his time. In the meantime, guys, I'm going to leave you with the credits. But enjoy. Mm -hmm.